Welcome back to The Change Physician. I am Melissa Katie, The Challenge Doctor, with my co-host, Dr. Kevin Kakaro on Saturday, September 3rd, 2022, in case you weren't aware. And we're here to share Saturday salutations, which is all about just saying hi, catching up, not only Kevin and I, but with the world out there, and also share what we've had going on in the podcast, perhaps what's coming. I'm actually pretty excited about some of the things coming up for everyone listening. So how are you doing there, Kevin? You know, I am well. It has You're been well. an interesting week for sure. And uh, yeah. Okay. I'm well. Well, now I'm just uh, clicking my stuff, trying to do my Facebook thing. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to look at our prior week, which looks like our release from this past Sunday would be uh, episode 214. On Sunday, we had the employee versus business owner mindsets, which are can be significantly different. And we kind of go deep into that, Kevin and I, about, um, you know, we both have been kind of, uh, you know, you could say sole proprietor, you could say um, small uh, business, corporation, small corporation, whatever you want to say. Um, but you learn a lot. There's a big uh, learning curve from going typical, collect your, your paycheck from an employee and don't have all the headaches and the things that, um, or challenges or exciting things sometimes um, that your owner of the business would have. So we talk about some of those differences. Um, and for those that might be transitioning into being your own boss, um, some things to think about and to be aware of. So um, any comments about that, Kevin? No, other than that's a, it's a big one. And, and I do think, and I can't remember if we did this in the episode or not, but um, it, there's there's definitely different perspectives from being a business owner as well being an employee. And I think the more that you can at least appreciate a different perspective, mm -hmm. it is useful because we tend to, you know, it, it, there's a lot of times when employees are, think that they're entitled to everything without knowing or understanding the risks they're involved for the business owner. And this is, I'm not saying that they should be taken advantage of, and we know that definitely occurs, but in the same way, business owners get taken advantage of by employees. So the more we can kind of understand the dynamic and there's risks and benefits. I and mean, one of the things I remember hearing once long ago was like, um, you know, my gold, my rules and in your gold, your rules, right? So if someone else is paying you, then really you need to be following their guidelines. And there's some expectations with that. And if you are paying or, and, it, and you're the owner, then you're the one who's kind of be creating that environment. Um, anyway, I, I do think it's an important perspective and, it's, and, it, and there are very different stresses involved with both. So, yeah. And I think if you do try to be a business owner or you go back to be an employee, you can appreciate those things and not take it so personally, I think sometimes is a, a benefit too. So, you know, we all kind of evolve in what we do in our lives, but um, definitely take a listen to that episode. And then Thursday, we had a Thursday throwback episode 28 from 2020. I think that was back in 2020. Um, <laughs> Dr. Linda Cox, who's a gynecologist and has become an online health coach um, and does a little bit of both. And I, I think uh, it'd be good to listen to that one again. Um, we had a, she's so really nice. nice. She's such yeah, a sweetheart. She's so nice. Yeah. And she connected us with some other people too, that are pretty awesome. So yep. check out the Thursday throwback. Um, we've got some stuff coming up. Um, we'll just generally speaking, say over the coming month or two, there'll be some interesting interviews that we have done with some very special people that we have not, uh, except for one, uh, one of the three, um, at least three. So I'm giving you a heads up. Um, we have interviewed before and it's so awesome that you'll just want to hear again anyway, but um, very excited about releasing those episodes. Uh, we'll try to put a couple little trailers for some fun on Instagram. So make sure to check out Instagram too. So anything you want to share, uh, exciting, interesting um, news related Kevin. Oh, there's always the news, which I don't want to. Okay, well, okay. I, I'm since I haven't done my my Saturday diatribe as these tend to go, go into. Ahead. So, um, I watched uh, Biden's speech on mm -hmm. Thursday, and it was short, you know, 20, 30 minutes or whatever. Um, it was extraordinarily important, and this is the, the this is is really disturbed me. Because I, I, I don't know how someone, I kind of heard about it or whatever. And so then I watched it and I actually watched it live stream on YouTube. It was not televised on any major news network. Hmm. Um, the topics that he was discussing are vital for the defense of, de this is not political. It's defending a democratic nation from a potential fall where if we are now saying whose vote counts and whose doesn't, 
when we have election deniers, despite the fact that there's no data, no legitimate factual data that says there's any substantial voter fraud in this country that are now changing election rules and literally at the state level trying to make it so that they can change what the people want in those states, that's a concern because once you fall into that, you're you're gone. And I, I'm, I'm just absolutely astounded that there was little, there, there was, it wasn't public, publicized. And then the amount of flack on this, because he basically said that there's a threat and MAGA Republicans are a threat, which they are. And the absolute hypocrisy from the press stating this crap, when you've got groups in these MAGA Republicans talk, talking about uh, liberals being socialists, being, um, you know, dangerous, advocating for violence against them. It blows my freaking mind. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then to see the level of control of our media, like people, oh, the liberal media, bull crap. I would I would be more explicit if I didn't think that would get us in trouble with the algorithms here. <laughs> but yeah. it is that it is simply not true. Yeah. Most of these media outlets are owned by very, very conservative, very, very wealthy individuals who have that are that you see the influence on this stuff. And then you have a, you know, like Fox News who 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 isn't, which is not even a news station. And they literally lie. Like, like me, when I, I'm always looking for what data supports and does not. And the narrative is is based, they'll spout out these lies and these narratives are so twisted that there's 6,000 tons of evidence and they say, well, no, that can't be true. This random note from some unknown troll uh, that told us that there were pedophiles in the basement of the Pizza Hut that had no basement actually in the structure of the building itself, that's legitimate? I mean, it... it it, it, I know it was very up. So, so now I'm all worked up again because it did work me up because it was a very important speech. It, it, it literally mapped it out and said, this is what we're fighting here. Yeah. And no, and they want to talk about, oh, he was, he was a divider, a divider. Come on. Okay. What about oh. the last president? Yeah. I mean, the other president would freaking spout oh, nonsense <laughs> and they would show it on everything yeah. like this garbage and, 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 and calling for people to, you know, get, get beat up and they got to beat up that that news journalist and we're going to do this to them and, and and they're playing this stuff and here's a legitimate president who was legitimately elected who who and and then they want to say that he's being the divider when he's been working for oh, almost two years now trying to produce legislation and very successfully by the way that's the other thing that just drives me crazy is the the successes that have been then have been pushed through legislatively certainly within the last nine months, despite massive obstruction that benefit the majority of Americans. And I, I would be ch challenged even somebody on the other political side to really view this objectively and say it didn't, it does not uh, um, benefit the majority of Americans rather than the sub small subset. I, I just, it just blows my mind. And I'm sure someone's out there, oh, you know, Dr. Kakaro, you're a raging liberal. No, I'm a thinker. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I am a thinker and I like evidence and I like fact and I like to live in a world where those matter. And when we're in, increasingly in a world where, where there's a group of people who are denying, you know, social reality and wanting to construct it into something else, um, it just I, it just blows my mind. It just absolutely blows my mind. And I'm, I am just so ashamed of our media um, and the fact that we can't report anything anymore. I mean, yeah. we cannot uh, re, uh, report legitimate news anymore. And we have to, it's all this drama garbage. Yeah. So well, that's and my rant. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm, I don't know if this is a lot of people say this, that they're not political or whatever, but I, I think we're at a point now where you have to pay attention to politics because it's affecting our lives tremendously and not necessarily in a positive way. And to see ignorant politicians spouting off stuff they don't even understand to people that don't know how to think for themselves that are essentially lemmings that are just fueled by emotion they can't process data or evidence and have a very singular um uh digestion or source of their information it's essentially being brainwashed we're all affected and and molded by the environment don't get me wrong if you're human and you don't think you have any bias and you are completely unaware and we talk about this a lot in our podcast, but there is some 
um, and, and there's some people that are very, very strongly, you know, uh, fueled by their religion. And, you know, problem is there's a lot of people with a lot of religions and they all think they're right. So, you know, we got to step back and objectively and look at these things and realize that we are affecting so many people's lives by people in these political situations that are making decisions for a very small sub segment of people like we've i think i don't remember if we talked about it right here it was another episode that like you said the majority of americans can benefit benefit from real basic pragmatic things but yet somehow we're we're leaning away from that and and it's i think it's disturbing well anyway if we want to somehow view a period in America as being the greatest time period. First, we want to frame what it is that we're defining. Are we talking about economic or are we talking about social? Because those are very different times. Yes. But either way, the, the, you could look at historical records and facts and data to construct what made them great. Yeah. What is being put forth now is not what made them great. If you're looking from the economic stand, the taxation was different. The way we invested our money in our country was different. Our focus on education throughout higher education in a way that we made it affordable for more and more Americans. That's not the, the, what the current shift is when we're seeing these inflationary changes and how, like, as a person who's paying college tuition now, the, the amount that's being, you know, it, it is so much harder for people to get a really quality education anymore. Um, and then we look at the social, or we, we're saying at a time when we had rampant discrimination and second class citizenship that was um, acknowledged and accepted. That's what it did. Are we saying that made us great? Um, and if we're going to do it, then, then at least be honest and say that's what you want. Um, I think people are going to vehemently disagree with you. But it's just like this nebulous garbage of promises that are based on literally nothing but lies and and this hate and rage and then somehow when you you you're like this is wrong what is being said is wrong political violence to further your aim because you can't manage your own ballot, ballot box or you can't provide legislation that benefits enough people and, and there's more and more people who 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 are voting against what you want and so now we're going to say that instead of saying we're going to say this fraud like I, I, the, one of the best lines was that you can't you cannot say you love democracy if you say the only way it works is if I win. And if I don't win, it's because you cheated. Yeah. I mean, that, that, it's there, and, and there's no evidence of it. And then there are oh, Hillary's emails, 30 something million dollars of interviews. In there, she was completely compliant. And you got Trump freaking, you know, with extraordinarily sensitive uh, uh, national security secrets. Mm -hmm. and that's okay like I, I i'm sure we have lost human intelligence to this like not lost it like oh it's gone like these people are probably dead somewhere because of of the, the lack of security that we have and the and what he did and and people who were supposedly law and order oh that was okay oh rioting at the capitol that was okay trying to overturn a free and fair election that was okay it's not okay it it isn't yeah. <laughs> so let, I, yeah. I'm like, let's stop pretending this is not a liberal conservative thing. This is a reality versus not. And this is quite literally thinking I'm trying to protect a democracy from a fall into fascism. That's yeah. it, because once you lose the right to vote, things can't change, period. Yeah. In other countries, I was talking to a friend of mine in Australia. I mean, you're mandated. Like you've, you've got to go vote. You can leave work and go vote. Like they do everything in their power to make sure everyone votes. Like it's a complete opposite of what we're dealing with right here, where you feel like you're being deprived or they're trying to make it more difficult. Like it, it's contrary to a democracy for, you know, from my perspective, being someone who's not. It, it is a contrary to a perspective. Yeah. It, it is not just your perspective is if you have a democracy, a representative democracy, then it means people should be able to vote. And if you are right. excluding certain elements of your society from the ability to vote, that is not a democracy. Right. Period. And you're manipulating the entire country. Yeah. Anyway, so that I guess um, that was a little bit more than. Um, <laughs> more than people wanted to swallow this here. morning or afternoon but i it, it is significantly it's concerning to me because 
all it takes is one or two election cycles and to change the dynamic where, where now we have people who are not elected, um, who can decide who and who not becomes your leaders in your states and at the federal level, and it was not going back. And um, people may hate that analogy, but that's exactly what happened in Germany. Uh, you know, they the the Nazi party came in, they played the game, um, they did the political stuff, they they said some things and people thought, oh, it's okay because I'm getting what I want. And they came in and that was it. So, um, you know, the, the advantages of, of understanding a little bit about history is it doesn't necessarily reproduce identically, but certainly the patterns there. So yeah. if you care about your country and you care about democracy and you care about having your vote matter in the future, then you better damn well sure that you're voting in this next election cycle to make sure that people who believe in fact are the ones getting elected and not the ones who are believing and pursuing a fiction that they are creating. Yeah, this fall is very important. Extraordinarily yeah. important. So that's it for me. Sorry. That's okay. You know, we got, we have, uh, Saturday salutations about. are turning into Saturday Kukaro rants, and, and that's not the way they're, <laughs> they're supposed to be happy. And there's a lot of happy that's stuff, okay. a lot of good stuff. But that one, it really did upset me because I, could, I just still can't believe it wasn't broadcast anywhere when that ding dong would you know eat a cheeseburger and it was and it was the news cheeseburger and spitting food all over him I, what i mean it's come on I the, know. the double standard here is 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 absurd yeah well i i think that it, there's nothing wrong with talking about this because it's dominating a lot of our lives and it's um making a lot of us shake our heads and um i think it's uh a lot of people that listen um, are thinkers and have at least a, you know, kind of, I, I think physicians in general, whether you're a physician or physician ally, I think there's uh, definitely in, in the way that we're taught to think as physicians, it's kind of like rooting through some of the evidence, trying to apply it to some pragmatism or some common sense and applying it to people's lives. And I, I don't think this is any different. You, you've got to like step back and like see the big picture. Well, well, we should be thinking like we're supposed to be like, 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 we're supposed to be applying scientific thinking. Now, unfortunately, in some of our future interviews, uh, we will talk about that, not necessarily political contents of how physicians don't use scientific thinking when it comes yeah. to how we do what we do. But at a minimum, you should be aware of it. And when it comes to something, I mean, really health, as fundamentally important as your health, you should be thinking scientifically, not anecdotally. And in the same way about politics, you should be thinking at least scientifically and not um, anecdotally on this stuff. Like, like what are facts? What is a fact? Yeah. Well, um, anecdotes can make you curious and can make you help create, if you're a scientist or a, a researcher, help create the evidence to support those well, things. No, they don't create the evidence. They create the hypothesis that you test. Corrected by Dr. Kukaro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that you test to find the evidence for or against. Right. Because you're a neutral. They, the, an anecdote generates a question which generates a hypothesis that we then can either confirm or deny by the design of the study. Um, because that, that's the danger is like, if you have a, 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 an anecdote that is a hypothesis that you want to prove true, true, and then you design it in such a way so that it is true, that's not science. No. I know you're not meaning that, but, but no, there's people no, out there that do that. No, but you said it better. That. So I'm, okay. I'm, I'm edifying you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway, well, um, any, uh, anything... Uh, I, I guess I will just uh, preface um, just I might be a little out of pocket uh, here and there and Kevin might show up and, and do some Saturday salutations with you all. Um, we'll just find out. We'll, we'll um, see what the Saturday we, we may be on a break. We may be on a fall might, break. I may little drop in a little bit. Um, it all depends. Um, yeah. Okay. But yeah, there, there's still going to be some episodes coming out, obviously, oh, yeah. and they're going to be awesome and you'll enjoy them. And then um, don't be shocked if, if you pop in on a Saturday or here, but if you don't hear from us for a while, uh, where you haven't gone anywhere, the yeah. podcast is still going strong and um, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Well, if, uh, if you want to know more about the change position, go to the change We'll see you next time. Stay well, folks. <laughs>